<laughs> right. So we need a comment. You need to co put a comment on and see who's watching. Right. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. Let's find out who's watching. See if Paul's watching to start with. Do you know what? Is the captain watching? No comment yet. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Down to forty nine percent now. So why would the animation make it <coughs> strange? It's, it's a, um, Is it not like a pre recorded then? Yeah. But it's at fourteen forty P as well. So Right. Uh, Saffron Dean Ale. Yes. Uh, Project X channel. Sorry yes. for the delays. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Me, Betty, and Rambo. Paul Davies, of course, from watching. Question is, are they are they sat in bed watching it now? This yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so we masked out the Eddie Lawson part and we've kept it from moving by locking it in place with a couple of pieces of one inch. So we're going to paint that. Uh, I'll just really do, I'll whip them side plates off just so they're not in the way. Something I haven't got is a TV in the bedroom. You haven't got a TV in no. the bedroom? No. You're never in there, that's why. Well, it's kind of banned because otherwise you know, you'd end up just getting home from work, putting kids to bed and then <laughs> going in bed yourself and just watching the telly, wouldn't you? I don't get why everyone's so mad about the, um, what's that BBC show everyone's watching at the minute? Uh, the Project X channel. 
like Call of Duty or something. Or Garage. I don't get why everyone's watching that at the minute. Well, even the cats are watching. <laughs> I met Rambo the other day. Yeah. What was it up so you can uh what? So you can see the comments as well. Uh I'll just put it on the desk here. I'll be able to see where I I don't understand why a rye use clear screws. It's like they're trying to make it difficult for you. It wouldn't be hard to put, make them like black or bright yellow or something, would it? They're hidden behind the side plate anyway. And then at least if you drop one, you'd be able to see it. Yeah. And they charge a fortune for the screws compared with like... We got a viewer from Mexico, Phil. Oh, cool. Uh, Ford. My wife Skrull is even watching. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> Did you say Squirrel? Yes. Squirrel. We're going to mask out all the way around the Eddie Lawson part of the design and then we're going to paint that red tonight and then we'll unmask it, see how it looks and then do a reverse mask um, so we can then start working on the rest of the helmet. One of the important things is making sure everything's all been pushed down properly because the paint will find a gap wherever it can. The other thing I'm going to do is leave a piece of tape that I use to lock down the curves to stop them moving. I'm going to leave them in place and I'm just going to run a blade around that outer one, peel away the excess and then it's just a case of keeping an eye on these make sure these inner ones don't move because normally between masking it and getting your spray gun out putting the paint and then coming back to it they will sometimes ping up and then you get around sorting them out if they do lift and a little bit of paint goes underneath them then it's just a case of coming back later with a little bit of white remasking that curve and then putting it back to white guide piece we've had in place to get the space in there on that section so that can come off. This 
see another guy at least we had on. Yeah, again, we come off. Went up to um, Barnsley Way oh, yeah. to see Project X Channel's bike. Did a little audio recording onto his bike. Um, and then had to drive up there again today. Found over Christian Hiddens' new lift. Nice. <laughs> he loved it, actually. Yeah. And he's put a little, if you go on his Insta, he's put a little teaser on Insta of the back of it. I wonder if your mum's going to log in again. <laughs> You're a big fan now. Yeah. That's another display for that. You can tell when a blade's blunt. It just drags. Stab myself with the scalpel just to hit kind of go viral van. Having an accidental scalpel incident. <laughs> Actually still asking you if you'll put this logo on it somewhere hidden. Sponsorship. <laughs> Is that no? It, well we need to talk <laughs> it private, don't we? Can't do it on a live stream. <laughs> I didn't even know Ash had a logo. Is this for the gaming stuff he does? No. Can I say his company or not allowed? What, plug his company? It's not really a plug, it's just telling me. Is this his internet? The website stuff? Yeah. Is he building me a website? He is. Then he can say what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Macbeth Design. There you go. Is there. he going to be loving that right There's now? a shout out. <laughs> So what we're doing here is we're putting, I say we, I mean probably I, what I'm doing, is putting down onto the fine line that's there, and you're barely putting any pressure on, so it's just slicing through the, uh, the masking tape on top. And sometimes you kind of know you're doing it just the right pressure, because sometimes you end up with little bits that haven't quite cut properly. The worst thing would be to cut that hard that you actually slip the two mil fine line in half and then when you pull the tape away your edge of what your original mask disappears. So this was a, a piece that was locking down that bend. So that's just one of the bits we're going to have to keep an eye on now whilst we go through this next stage. You'd think me doing this, I'd have like a steady hand, wouldn't you, mate? <laughs> yeah, you'd think by now. It's just, <laughs> I've like caffeine detox issues constantly. The Beth Design said, um, <laughs> website's pretty much there. Just go, need to go over the lap bits and, you know, private with it. Off stream. Off stream.
Alright. So that's the design on mast. Final chair. You can switch to the top camera if you want, yeah. I'm gonna mask out the top of this now anyway. This is where you find out how good I am at looking for that from Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> At least it's not going to be four hours. Was it four hours last time? Yeah, pretty much on the dot. It's not going to be four hours this time. Well, I say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the rain stopped as well. Yeah. No, uh, two sons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two sons. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsored by. <laughs> I need a two sons coffee mug. That's what I need. Yeah. It's where you cut a piece of paper, wrap part of it, and then you kind of get, you, you look at what's left and go, <laughs> that'll do. What are we listening to tonight? Elevator music again? It's not elevator music, that. You need like shopping mall music like they have in, um, you ever seen a film called Napoleon Dynamite? I said, how about the Becky Dynamite? Unless you can provide me with free coffee. Yeah, he supplies the coffee as well. On the hall. So what colour is going to go down first? You're going straight on with red or you're going to put the base down? It's red, but I could actually ask Paul which red he wants. Oh, that's true. I could actually get all the red down and say, do you want it pearl, do you want it sparkly, or do you want it like the original awesome being flat red? Yeah. Originally, I, would, I was going to say flat red, I think. But it's, it's up to Paul, whatever you'd like. I have got a tendency to always go sparklescent on everything. Just yeah, because I love that yeah, when the sun cool. hits it. Paul 
an original. Full original. Full original. Back to the 1980s RAL colours. <laughs> Teeth that there. That's something you say every time. No, it's not looking that bad. <laughs> Going to soon. Plan on nine. How much does an average paint job cost? And what's the turnaround like? Average paint job cost is the hardest one to kind of answer really. Because it's different for everyone depending on whether you're a racer or a private customer. The racers get their helmets a little bit cheaper because um, there's just sheer quantity that you do for them. So you're doing anywhere between two to eight plus helmets a year. Some riders get to a lot more than others. Um, and then you'll be invoicing for large quantities rather than small amounts. Unfortunately though with the race stop, um, you're invoicing big companies which can take a while to get a payment off. So you went just more from a you know, general inquiry? Yeah, it's, like, it's one of those. It's, I saw, but it depends yeah, on the design. It depends on the helmet. Joe, is it a brand new helmet? What design's going on it? The design itself will vary, Joe, the cost will vary depending on the, um, the helmet as well. Some helmets can be harder to put lay a certain design onto than others. Um, and then, yeah, complexity of design goes from, you can go as far as you want really. So from a kind of ballpoint, I guess you're starting around two, three hundred? Mm, if you... From a colour and a couple of lines? The majority of race work starts at like three hundred. And then you're going up to, to I think one and a half? Race work, you could go as high as you want with race work even. You start doing special race helmets and they can just go up and up and up, can't they? And this one from Saffron Dean as well. He All right. He's not allowed glitter, because I want full glitter. <laughs> so, <laughs> solid colours with matte lacquer. <laughs> Dull as this water. Alright, uh, we're going to... Um, Andy asked the same question as well. Hey guys, can you tell me how much you can Kind of, kind of Andy? Andy White. Oh. I thought you were going to say Andy Sparrow then. The captain, as he's otherwise known. 22k? Yeah. Well, this is my... Uh... So the first coat we're going to put on is an adhesion promoter. So this is... This has been grey scotched the surface. Um, to create a physical key for the paint to hold on to. But with crash helmets, the finishes on them are a lot tougher than what they would be on a car finish. So you kind of have to step up your, your abrasive grades to do the same stuff. Although I, I've got to say, I've noticed that the paints on the crash helmets have been getting a little bit softer, which is probably to do with VOCs and the manufacturers being forced into using more envir environmentally friendly coatings. Um, 
And that goes, that's the same with cars as well. Cars are getting, the coating on cars are getting worse. Um, so yeah, we've done a, a grey scotch all over to create a slight physical key. I've just given that a pan of white to get any, rid of any kind of greasy fingerprints from laying the lines down. Um, and now we're going to use a small amount of an adhesion from Asda to um, make sure we get a good adhesion all the way along. And that also, the adhesion promote is clear, which is going to stop us getting bleeding of the colour under the lines. There's a really good one that Createx make. That is, um, it's just called 6000, I think it's called. And that's a water-based adhesion promoter that is like a Swiss army knife of paint. Use that stuff on everything. The one I'm using here is a Leffler. Leffler one. Sometimes I double up. Sometimes you use a bit of this and then you use the 6000 on top. So this is known as a... Um, a 2 pack or 2k so it has a little activator in it a little bit of a hard mask and it's only going to require basically what we call a drop coat or a grip coat which is it's not a full film it's basically like tiny little droplets on the surface so it's a very very light coat we're going to put on um, it doesn't need much more than that and it means that we can move straight into overcoating it straight away. Whereas if we used this and put a thicker coat on like they do with what it's meant to do, you'd have to wait for it to cure off a bit. Otherwise you get it kind of cracking the paint that you apply on top as it shrinks back. Mike Garvey. He's a, he was a legend, Mike Garvey was.
Say sorry. Oh, maybe I'll leave. Maybe, but you know I never will. No, so I choke you down just like a pill. Rather than if you're doing your own, you're setting the, the lines, if you know what I mean? Yeah. So just things like try and make sure you've got exactly the right colours and the right thickness of pinstripe. Things like if you look at so people have asked me like what size you know, what thickness lines Joey Dunlop helmet had on <laughs> and things like that. And when I did um I did a helmet for Sean Dufresne and he had like a, a mash of um, Arai GP Legends basically. So we had Schwantz, Mamola, um, Schwantz, Mamola, and uh, Kuhn, all matched into one design. And working out like the thickness of line that um, Schwantz had on his lip, it's, you have to kind of go with what, what you've got that's close. Because you've obviously got 3 mil. Uh, 2 mil, 3 mil, 6 mil, 8 mil, 12 mil, 5 mil. And I think there was lines on it that were like 2.5 mil because Sean had seen the original and so you, have, you kind of have to go with a 3 mil for that. Um, but there were places I think where we ended up as well as doing um, a 3 mil and a 2 mil side by side because it wasn't a 6 mil line, it was like a 5 mil line. I mean, 
thing like your masking tapes and things have changed a lot from the 80s and early 90s. So, I wouldn't say it's necessarily standardised now, but you could find there was some random company that the painter was using back then who was doing some bizarre fitnesses. Probably all in inches. Is it okay in America? This is the old Schwanzberg when he was riding the um, Pepsi Suzuki. Not the, not the later with which was done by, designed by um, Rudy Design, who was like a lift. I thought Paul wanted yellow. He said yellow, but you put it in the comments. You definitely should put it in the chat below. I definitely yellow. want yellow. Make sure he paints yellow, it solid yellow. As sparkly as you can. Sparkly as you can, yellow. <laughs> um, the reason I put a bit of, I put like a yellow ground coat down because um, I find that if you go to full opacity with the red it starts getting really dark red um, and you create quite a build with it and what the yellow does is creates a orange hue where when like if you get a bit of direct sunlight on it and it shines through the colour a little bit you get an orange flame coming back at you um, whereas if you don't put the yellow underneath and you get the same effect the red goes pinkish because it's hitting the white and bouncing back through the red so you kind of just it allows you to kind of keep the colour bright um, and without getting that kind of pink hue so there yeah. That sum that up. Is that better for anyone, Andy? Just uh, tweak the audio for you. Just let us know if that sounds any better. Can you hear you talking? Yeah. <clears throat> Sensitive microphone, that one. It is. It's one of those Rode mics. So, wait. Oh. Rode, uh, Rode Go, is it? But it's... I got it, because I thought like everyone had them, and then when I got it, I had a load of clicking issues. Um, and then you go on the internet and find out that loads and loads of people have got the same issue. So um, it turned out to be like Wi-Fi related. If you have the Wi-Fi turned on on your GoPro, it makes the audio pop. Right, so now I've got a bit of red at last.
it just through your website for a problem in it, Phil? Yeah. 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 There's a contact form on the website. Yeah, yeah. Andy, if you go to um, paintnation.co.uk. Yeah. 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 Paintnation.co.uk, and there's a form on there you can fill out for a quote, and uh, we'll get straight back to you on there. So what I've done is, uh, now I've put that yellow foundation coat down, and this is all water based paint, so we got a yellow foundation which had a bit of the 6000 in just to create even better adhesion. You can't be kind of going that extra length on adhesion because if you have an issue, the fix is a pain and you're going to have a whole area of the helmet that's got an issue. Um, all the paints that I use, or a lot of the, the base coat stuff is uh, auto air water based paints, which are these. And these come in different types, so you'll have the same red, but one will be a semi opaque, you'll have a transparent red, like that one. So both the same colour, but one's slightly better coverage than the other. Um, and with water based paints, they use mainly air movement to dry them. So that's why you'll hear the guns constantly blowing air. It's not always painting. So the first stage of the trigger is just air. That's just air there. Um, a little bit of warmth helps. So you have a heat gun, which is also blowing air, obviously. But on a very low heat, so you can keep your hand there. It's actually probably not even as hot as a hairdryer. And it's just to help the water base dry off quickly. Uh, and it also through dries. One of the problems you can get with water base is if you coat it up and you keep coating it and then the top of the water based paint kind of dries off and skins you end up with a film that moves on top of like a wet surface underneath so constantly working my way around with the heat gun drying as I go I find it best to kind of go to almost like full coverage everywhere work my way around and then 
once I've done what I think is full coverage, I'll come back and just have a close look now, see if there's anywhere that I think might need a tiny little top up. Um, the other advantage to that is because you're working around so slowly, the, the actual surface of the helmet is warming up as you're going around, which is going to help the paint dry quickly and that will then in turn prevent bleeding on the edges because if it's going to if it goes on wet and it's got time it'll start to creep on those edges if we have got any areas where the paint's blown through do i wonder any of the joins or if the paint uh, the tape's lifted anywhere we've got a few little things we can do to fix that um there's quite an easy little fix as well so i'll just have a quick look the bits that would be easy to, to get low coverage on are within these kind of pinstripes on the edge because you'd think so like here in that corner we've got full coverage here but that very tip is just a little bit faint so i'll just put a tiny bit more in there same down there just a little bit more down there Put one uh, Mike says hi. Mike Mason. Oh, Mike's back. And uh, Captain Pugwash. Is the captain on now? Captain's back, yeah. Is he driving again tonight? We'll find out in a moment. I'll do his deliveries. I'm gonna, um, I'm thinking, I might do some little teasers for Captain during these lives. I don't know whether to just leave bits, maybe bits of the helmet in the background in the odd shot. Oh, like, yeah. Or, or actually maybe do like a little sneaky preview, but really quick, so you can't really... I don't want to spoil the handover, because you know what it's like with the handover. It's, about, it's one of the best well, parts. It's yeah. Most satisfying Yeah. That's part of the... Like... I think if you never saw the customer's reaction to it, You'd want a lot more money for what you do. <laughs> yeah. Because it is part of the pay, the pay off for it, not for the amount of work. Good thing about the auto app. Real good coverage on some of them pigments. Yeah, the, the semi paints cover really, really well. And the other thing, the other reason why I, I mean, I went to water base with the lethal paints back when I was teaching, um, and before that when we were when we were on the ICI stuff. Was it ICI? Is it? I was on Dupont solvent, and then it moved to ICI auto colours. Oh yeah. And then started teaching. I was on the lethal. Um, base coat, which are water base, and I've just ever since I got on it, I messed with it. I love water base paint. Quick update on the uh, captain's location. Yeah, captain to captain. He's, he's on the he's on his monkey bike, halfway up the M6, flat out. Unfortunately, <laughs> not. He's <laughs> in Coventry waiting for his load. Oh, oh well. Well, he's come on at just the right time because we are going to unmask what we've just done. The reveal. <laughs> Clean this through. And that paint, the other thing with the water base, that's dry now. So I can I can mask on that literally straight away and nothing will happen. It won't lift or anything. Um, and the other good stuff about the, the auto colours... Uh, SM Designs in Ireland is the importer and distributor for it and they supply a couple of UK companies like airbrushes.co.uk I think it is um, a lot of the solvent stuff like House of Colour just the availability isn't there the same even though they're both both um, Createx is American colour just like House of Colour but the supply chain is better Right, and being water-based is better for the environment, 
safe for me. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy that we've got a nice even red all the way around, no low coverage bits. We're ready to unmask. So I'm going to unmask. I could actually leave all this line work on and reverse mask to where we've masked to, which is what I'd normally do. Um, but for the benefits of everyone watching, because you probably want to see how that looks, um, I will mask all the line work apart from the very F1. So we can see how, kind of, how the layout looks. Is Paul still watching? Because you don't want to miss this bit. He hasn't commented in a while, so he's either fell asleep. Or, he, or he's thinking he's got a yellow helmet still. Oh yeah, he's, he's panicking. <laughs> he's, he's in the car on the way here now. Yeah. I said red. <laughs> Lawson never had yellow. Let's see if we get a comment from see him. See if we get, yeah. Shall I start unmasking anyway? We can start, it's going to take a good few minutes, isn't it? So let us kick off. Oh, Paul, yeah, he's here, he's here. Let's kick off with this. <laughs> Captain, What's an plan? update as well about my next vlog I've planned, or uh, he's got planned. Uh, he's bought some <laughs> high platform boots <laughs> and a white suit along with a curly black wig. Oh, we were talking about him dressing up in 70s gear, weren't we, and doing a, a video on the monkey bike. <laughs> wait, 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 before your mask. What? Paul said he wanted to be green. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sparkly green. <laughs> <laughs> With a rainbow pearl over the top. So you can see, probably can't see, see here where, where the helmet dips, we've got a tiny little blow through, so you've got this faint red. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that. Nice easy fix. It's barely visible on the camera. Yeah. It's barely visible on your beam. <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's alright. <laughs> I just pulled the M off helmet. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put a piece of masking tape over that now. Protect it for the rest of the job. That's one of the downsides to sometimes masking over those rides. It's always a little wet as you lose as well. See, coming alive. Just looked red before. It's probably hard to make out on the camera when it's masking tape with red on. So what I'm going to do is just trim off them there because that line becomes part of the outer line which I need to keep on for the next mask.
this is where everyone who said that the time lapses you couldn't see enough and could you just do a normal speed one because I'm probably regretting it. <laughs> They've all probably They've turned off. off. They've all yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah. Seemed like a great idea. How many hours in are we now on this one? Um, no, one hour fifteen. Oh, flying tonight. Now it's one last. The rest of it. So remember, we need to keep that last white. Uh, well, it's going to be white because there's going to be a white pinstripe to the edge of the design. So we're keeping that last bit of two milli tape in place before we put any more colour around it. And that's going to be what we mask to, but on the opposite side of it. Is uh, is Paul going to Snetterton? I'm sure he mentioned something about going to Snetterton. Getting a bike. I think it was the ZX7 he was getting ready for Snetterton and he put in one of his posts. I didn't know whether that was BSB related or track day. that the ninja plays ball then. <laughs> it's a good line up there, you can see it right next to the picture. Turn it to pull inside on left. Mm. Like that. Yeah. Everyone will think he's a uh, an old endurance racer turning up at a track day with that bike. Might we, get, uh, we might race the 400 if it ever works. From Paul. Trials and tribulations of how exactly ZX, ZX, ZX Rs and ZX7 Rs. Price on them 400s is like astonishing. Now, entered that um, performance comps competition, and it was a double prize competition where you bought one ticket, and there was two bikes to win, and the first winner picked which one they wanted, and then then you got like the second winner or the person in second gets the other one. And there was a ZX7 and a 400, and to be honest. 
I was leaning towards adding the 400 if I wanted it because the value of him is higher than the ZX7s. I think there's just not that many 400s around anymore with lowish mileage, unmessed with, unraced. And they're quite desirable because they're a little bit lower power, lower seats. But screamers. Today. What day are we on, Mike? Tuesday. Tuesday. Have you watched any more Taskmaster? I think I watched every single episode. <laughs> you been binging it? In about a week. <laughs> and it's like, I think it's seven. Is it seven series? No, I don't like. Eleven now. Is there? I think I watched most Link? of them in. Because there's a series that's on now, on Thursday night. Oh, okay. I'll start tuning into it then again. Watch it on catch up. So, we've unmasked everything we want to unmask, kept on the pin stripe all the way around the edge which we're going to mask on this side off. So where we've got that little blow through, so the white on here is uh, factory white still, which has got a clear coat on it. So what I can do is just get a blade and drag it sideways across anything that's gone under the tape. And that will just clean up. Now you can do this if it's already, so if you've got a base coat and you put a colour on top, you can use the same technique. It's just a little bit harder and not quite as clean. That's the one. Just give it a scrape. The tack cloth will just lift off anything that's any loose bits that come off. Obviously some helmets are worse for this kind of stuff than others. Um, the easiest being something like a open face, plain open face helmet would be dead easy because there's, there's no convex, concave, sorry, concave sections. And then you get the same thing happen where the two tapes cross. 
because obviously one has to lift up onto the other, you get this tiny, tiny little gap. And very, very small amount of paint gets through, but it just spoils it sometimes. So it's worth coming around and just cleaning up all these edges. It's going to take a couple of minutes to do. Those of you who can't see much, Andy's just thinking you get closer to the camera so we can see a bit better. Is that close enough? <laughs> well, Captain, I'm going to have to block you, mate. Put you on a timeout, sorry. <laughs> Put him in the waiting room like in that parish. I think you'll agree with me, mate. Why? He's put... You're going bald, Phil. Oh, what? Kick him out. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> I need to borrow his 70s wig. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Happens to the best of us. You know that. You're next, mate. <laughs> this is why drones are a bad idea as well. For, for aging men. <laughs> I'll change camera angle, there you go. Are oh, you having... There you are, that's better. Was it the over, overhead shot? No, no, I've just Showing changed that. Showing my thinning hair. I've just changed that now. You're all right now. <laughs> oh, sorry. What is this music you got on? It's like um, it's getting a bit heavy, Mike. This isn't. Know, it, this isn't this is, elevator music. This is supposed to be chill, chill, uh, a chill mix. Ask, ask Andy what he thinks we should have on. Yeah, hey, go on, Andy. <clears throat> Give us a what you feeling like? A bit of Britney Spears. No. Or Christina Aguilera. Was it Captain's idea that elevator music last time? Is he going to have a bit of ABBA to the? Uh, to the next video. Or Disco, Inf oh, Disco Inferno. Monkey Bike, Disco Inferno, one of those dreamy folk light filters. He needs like um like a disco ball medallion type thing to go around his neck. And some Elvis glasses. Relax your mind. Eight hours of stress relief. Here we go. Is that another one of my videos? <laughs> my eight hour video. Mm Mike said, uh, have you ever sneezed and had to fix or start again? I just paint over it. <laughs> just flat it out and paint over it. <laughs> Is that what he's referring to, or a slip of the knife? <laughs> Presumably it means uh, a mistake in there. Just tell him it's detail. Yeah. Well, that's art, isn't it? What's the lumpy bit? Oh, it's, it's a feature. Charge extra. It's not just blood, sweat and tears that go into it. 
Bonnie M. But Captain wants on. Bonnie M. Mm. I think, right, I could be wrong here, but Boney M recorded their music in Strawberry Studios in Stockport. Which is down near the police station on the bank. Should we put it on? Will we, will we get in trouble? Uh, YouTube gods? Or? It depends. You, you'll get a copyright strike, which doesn't necessarily mean it's getting taken down. But... Um, Depends, you don't really know some tunes that you literally just can't have on and then it the video will get taken away type thing So it's worth doing your research whether it's a copyright strike and it's up oh, so Or a copyright strike that. and it's like we're live. So yeah, <laughs> we can't we have time for research. YouTube and then the music rolls <laughs> Mike's a <laughs> DNA tape <laughs> This about the uh, when you sneeze Mike uh, Mike Hyson. Mike Hyson. Did he get down to the uh, the biker pick shoot on when it's passed the other day? He, I think he does quite a few of the biker pick shoots. He needs to go down Grindleford on the odd Sunday morning. Sex. What's he put? Some scooter on. What's, what is scooter? Project, oh, no. I'll tell you what Project X is going to love. Because I know he's got this, he's got a thing for, um, at the moment, for like old movie t shirts. Mm. So he had a Jaws one on the other night. Or the other day, should I say. Um, and he's, I think he's going to have a thing for Eden's latest helmet. It's definitely movie related. The new one. I'll do you a mixtape with some scooter. You'll love it. Yeah. What was it we were talking about last time? Was it Wigan Pier? And Helter Skelter, drum and bass. Oh, yeah. That's too old for you, that, I think. Is it? Is this the latest music, Mike? Listen, I feel like I'm in a spa. Chill. <laughs> I feel you know, like I'm going in for a massage. I, can't get, I don't know why you want the line here, Phil. <laughs> I put chill step on, yeah. and it's too, you just never <laughs> <laughs> have I can't run these lead live things without you. Alexander O'Neill. Top Gun. Has Alexandra been on Eden's Instagram then and had a look at the sneaky preview? Uh, Mike said, uh, no, it was in work. And yeah, I'll try and get on train with the soon. Dude, I'll let you know. Uh, Farnoff said, I'm amazed you can mask up your work so quick after painting it. Oh, Does yeah. Do have a lift when I'm masking? Shall, shall we check? Ah, Are you ready? <laughs> this could, <laughs> get a this could go terribly wrong. Get a uh, uh, it's like pulling a band aid. Whoa. Yeah, yeah it sticks. <laughs> the magic of water base. No one believes me. Anyone who's, who uses solvent base and the like, it's rubbish. Water base, rubbish. Always peels back. It's just a case of getting that um, your process just right. <laughs> getting used to it. Jade's on for life. So it sounds when like you're coming home. Sounds like yeah. Sounds like something to get the kids asleep. <laughs> uh. 
How often does Jade have to listen to you talk about YouTube? Just out of interest. If it's not gaming YouTube sites, it's paintwork YouTube. Let's try this one then. I recognise this tune actually. You gotta be kind of accurate doing this because you you're only masking onto a two millimeter wide piece of tape, and you don't want to obviously overlap beyond it. So you're working within a mill tolerance, really. We can have this one finished tonight then. Oh yeah. Easy. Easy. I'm starting to wonder whether Paul wants me to just keep going on the live stuff so he can see it all the way through live or whether he wants me to just kind of get it done. <laughs> Why do you leave some trim parts on, like the visor seals? Does it not make it hard to get clean edges? Um, so when I started doing uh, the race helmet, so Showy and Arai, Arai was in an actual letter. They send you, send you a letter saying, do not remove any trim components um, because if it's not reinstalled correctly, the, you end up with little air leaks coming through because the rubber isn't put down flat enough. So, um, when you, if you say, for instance, if I wanted to take this rubber off, I'd have to cut it off because it's super glued all the way around the back. And in doing that, sometimes you take a little bit of the rubber um rather than taking away the helmet or sometimes you can end up cutting into the paint a little bit but either way you're in, you're creating what was two flat surfaces glued together and they're now going to become distorted by the cutting away even if you then kind of went around the back of the rubber and cleaned it up a little bit if there's any bits of paint stuck to it or glue it's not going to be as even so you're not going to get that same level perfectly all the way around which is going to create more of an issue now if you were if you had a brand new rubber seal, which you can get, you can even get coloured ones from the likes of Ant-Man Customs. But the rubber is a different type of rubber, it's like a silicone rubber. And if you look, like, talk to any of the helmet painters, they are, they can be a bit tricky <laughs> getting them to stick down. They do, there is like an advised glue to use to stick them down with. Um, but they can be a bit tricky sticking them down and getting them to stay. And I've seen on a few occasions where and I can't say it's I can't say that the person used the correct glue or not because I don't know. But if they have used the incorrect glue, it definitely won't stick. And if they have used the correct glue, it should stick if it's all prepped up correctly. Um, but yeah, it's. I, I, because I have to work around the rubbers with the race helmets anyway, you get good at masking them out. You get used to like masking them out. And if you look at a lot of my galleries, you'll see there's close-ups of rubbers. Um, and Joe, you know, like the rubber edges in the photos, I get a nice clean edge on them. The hardest one to mask the rubbers out on so far has been the LS2, which was really tricky around the edge of the visor mechanism. Uh, the visor seal, sorry. 
top helmet though, aren't you? So. You love your LS2, don't you, mate? Them 30 quid ones. Brand new, brand new LS2 out as well now. For this year. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It'll be an Evo something, I think. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, top of the range. Uh, Liam Crawford says, hey up, mate. Oh, is Liam using this to get to sleep too? He also says, late. That's what he always says. <laughs> Um, Paul has responded as well. He put, um, great to see the live stuff, but I'd like the big reveal. So, so maybe kind we of, just don't do. Yeah, so we won't do the whole stuff. thing. Yeah. Yeah. We want a bit of a. A bit of a buzz to it when he sees it for the first time. Yeah. He put, although we. Uh, we could arrange to meet on the ZX7Rs. Best put recovery trucks on notice, though. <laughs> Uh, Andy Whiteman as well, he put, will you do clear coats over the top? Over the top of? Uh, the finished design. Yes. Lacquer it yeah, yeah, so, um, I will do all of the artwork in one, Joe, without any clear coat first, uh, because I don't have any issues with lifting. The only time I, I will often kind of clear coat, flat it, do some some details or whatever and then clear coat again is often when you've got sponsor logos going on race helmets and then you'll sandwich that between two clear coats and the reason for that is because the logos that sponsors often use are a, uh, a decal and if you put them onto the base coat it kind of doesn't sit perfectly smooth you get a little bit of air under it and then you can get little bubbles appearing which you don't want obviously so um but this is going to be all paint, so it's going to be right the way through, airbrushed, and then clear coat it, flat the clear coat off. So there'll be two two coats of clear coat, which is the maximum you can really do with the clear coat I use because it's about that stuff. It's a Leclerc UHS, which stands for Ultra High Solid Clear Coat. It has quite a thick build to it. Um, when I say quite a thick, it's really thick to be fair. So there's two coats of that. The thick build allows me to get the level changes between the airbrushed sections and the factory finish underneath. Kind of evens them out a little bit. So then I'll smooth all that down with some P1000s on a soft pad. And then two more coats of lacquer. And then if I think that it's close enough to being right, I might just then um, give it a little flat and polish. Um, if I think it could do with a little bit more levelling up, then I'll give it another P2, uh, P1000 soft pad, do two more coats of lacquer, and then polish. And then that's job done. We've got a question from Mike again. Mike Hyton. And this is probably the question of the night, actually, because I'd love to know this, and you probably don't even know the answer to it. What, you want to know my answer to this question? Yeah. Okay. Tom Sykes' latest helmet. Yeah. It looks amazing. How long did it take? Ages. <laughs> because um, he came to me asking for that helmet first. And he wanted it for the first test. And I was like, there is no way I can even tell you. I couldn't even predict how long it was going to take. Um, so I said to him, we need to do something quicker for the first test. So that's why the Hawaiian shirt themed one was done. And then um, that kind of went down really well. It went down better than what we thought because this was this was the big one, the one that's just come out. That was the one Tom was asking for. And the Hawaiian shirt theme one was more my idea. I mean, it was a bit of a joke on the whole Huddersfield. Everything was Huddersfield theme, but kind of Hawaiian-y. So, um, yeah, so then as soon as that was out, I've been doing the, the beach one. And we've just been... I mean, it, we wanted to get it done for the first official World Superbike test that they did. And it just wasn't quite there yet. So he's, he's obviously had it the other week. But it was, it meant that I could just keep going back to it and putting more and more into it. And there's loads of details that you can't even see on the photos. So like on the top of the waves in the sea, there's tiny little starbursts on the tips of the waves. Like it's just glistening in the sun. And all that's in gloss lacquer where everything else is in that. It just looks, it's such a cool look. Yeah. It's such a cool look. So, take a guess on ours. 
I, I wouldn't guess hours, I'd guess in days. Um, I think I'd probably spend, doing day and night, I'd probably spend about 10 days doing days on nights on it. <laughs> and that's like going, that's not just painting, no, that is, that includes stripping it. They come in plain black, so it needs putting into white first, and then lacquering. So I've got a, a, basically this finish. Plain canvas. Yeah, you, yeah, you're going to like a, a solid lacquered, clean finish to start with. And then um, you're then going on the computer. Obviously, I had to do a design for Tom to kind of approve. And when I was doing the design, it wasn't coming out how I knew I could lay it out. So I was giving him, sending it and going, it's kind of going to look like this, but I don't know. And even on the design, originally we had a sun on the top. And when I came to do the paint work, it just didn't look right. I kind of, I didn't even try and put it on because it, it, the sky looked so good with the clouds. So I left that and then um, I had to do find loads of palm tree photos as references and then find silhouette versions of palm trees and take them into Illustrator and manually draw all of them out again to get them looking right so I could turn them into a, a mask cut. So. Um, you've been told off by Liam Crawford. Why, what's up with Less standing around and more work. Clock is ticking. <laughs> well, we're done. Sight tell we're me. done on that for tonight, it's I think. my favourite. Who, Liam, Liam said that? Yeah, the new Lee Johnson one, though. Yeah, Liam, Liam said one. he really likes the new Lee Johnson. He's, um, he wants to do, like, a swap, paint job swap. So he paints one for me, and I paint one for him. Uh, Mike's, if you ask the question. What I might do, I need to get an LS2 for him to paint for me, because I know how much he'll... he'll hate masking out the trims on it mm. and I can be really picky and be like oh there's overspray on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah Mike who asked the question about uh, how long did it take for the Tom Sykes when he just put wow amazing job dude yeah it took ages there's a few helmets that take ages but they're sometimes worth it aren't they oh yeah yeah there's then ones that really the Marvel DC like comics them. was the longest but that was because every character on it was like an individual paint job like doing the Joker took Probably three days doing the Joker. And the Marvel DC Spider-Man. Spy um, all the chin bar bit was a few days. It just everything took time on that. And the hardest thing was I had the customer like, have you done my helmet yet? And I'm like, I was trying to balance race work with private work, which is always the case anyway. Um, but yeah, so I, I was um, trying to just, sometimes you, You've got a customer who wants something right now and you have to just kind of cope with it knowing that when they get it they're gonna love it yeah so it's just yeah i've not i've not had a customer who's been waiting and then gone oh, go it's all right <laughs> but it took too long no one's ever said that everyone's when they get it it's worth it's the wait worth it, yeah, yeah everyone says it's worth the wait but yeah, it's, it's like spinning plates between getting all the, well, just doing all the race work on its own is like spinning plates to, to make sure everyone's got everything when they need it. Everyone's doing tests at different times or like press, press shoots. Have you seen this? Right, this is my little hack. So you get a bit of overspray on the base of this and then, what's my blades? What blade happened to the, uh, why is it half blocked? <laughs> so, a bit of leftover lacquer in the gun. Oh, you pour it on? Pour it on, and then get that. It takes off all the overspray. And you get a nice clean piece of metal again. But the one of the stands I used for the, uh, when I did the Rusty Mate helmet for Idem, and it's just, it's obviously, I mean, it's stainless steel base, so it can't really eat into it, but the rust effect is just so hard to shift. Talking of rust effect, I'm going to do a, Corroded copper one soon on my Icon Air Flight project. Oh, the new LS2 called Thunder. Is that what Liam said? Yeah. Can you get me a Thunder? Uh, oh, Liam, can you get him a Thunder? <laughs> <laughs> Even more fun than the old one, apparently. Oh, is it? Mm. Ugh. So the vents aren't too bad on the top. Because they're all like double-sided taped, which is 
I think it should be the industry standard for everyone because the double sided tape is easily strong enough but it saves you drilling into the shell unnecessarily yeah do you know what I mean I think the less you penetrate into the weave in the shell the stronger the helmet's going to be so there you go look at that look how clean and tight that is it's one of those it's, just, it's like peeling PVA glue off your fingers as well <laughs> that's a satisfying thing you right I think we're pretty much done there for tonight I need to um, next stage we're going to put the grey fade on next I think we're going to go for I'm just going to make the image bigger yeah so we're going to do the grey fade and then we're going to put some masking on um, like the cat, we'll probably paint the cat on next there and do some of the flame work and then finish off with the two Japanese style suns and then it's into lacquer so I'll probably do, if we do one, another live video yeah, one more live one See how far I can get on that, and then we'll leave it at that, and Paul can have the surprise afterwards. But Mrs. Da Ms. David, Mrs. Davis Dean, um, or Miss Davis Dean, Miss Davis Dean, um, needs to sort me a test ride on a mutt because <laughs> she works at the mutt place. All right. It's a mutt motorcycle. I quite fancy a, a ride around on a little one two five retro bike. <laughs> Paul says, uh, Shall I plug my other YouTube channel? Excellent work again from Paul. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, plug it. So my other YouTube channel is called Classic Moto. And if you search Classic Moto Norton Commando, you'll see there's only two videos on, or three videos on there. But Norton Commando one's going quite well. And it's basically focused around the kind of older bikes and audio and the sound of them. That's the plan. Uh, Liam said the new ones are all screwed. Even the rubbers are screwed on. Oh, he was telling me that. Yeah, the, the rubbers aren't even fixed on the glue. They, they're all strippable by screws. But you have to take the... But that make it easier. You have to take the EPS liner out the sides, he said, oh, to get so to the screw, and you have to break the EPS. Now, this isn't the skull cap part, okay. this is just the cheek sides. So you have to break them to get them out to get to the screw, and then LS2 sends you replacement EPS parts to put in. But this is another, I mean, you don't go stripping um, EPS parts ever. The only time I've stripped and refit EPS was in Jay Dixon's Moto Tulips because he sent me shells um, and they had the EPS in the chin but then you had to put a component in that was for the front vent that wasn't on the helmet so you had to remove it to get it back in and just doing that's a pain just squeezing because it feels so brittle it's polystyrene but you've got to flex it to get it in and out Right, are we signing off? Or is there any other questions? We'll call it. Um, Paul Davis, but come down, we'll get the ninja on the dyno. <laughs> Which can one? Take, you can take a mutt hopper. He's got a choice. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike Tyson's already subscribed to the Classic Moto channel. Awesome. So, yeah. Right, that's it. We've, we kept up, up pretty quick with all the questions that came in, so. Yeah. What are we up to now? An hour and a half in? Two hours? Uh, two hours in two six hours. minutes, so yeah. That's alright. Not, not done bad at all there. And it's looking a bit more Eddie Lawson now. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Right. Let's sign off. Thanks for watching, guys.